Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make an RPG in Unity 5 and welcome to episode 9. So last episode there was a little problem with one of the scripts which a couple of people may have had. I noticed um, one or two people in the comments and I had a couple of comments on uh, Facebook as well. Um, when we click the accept button on the quest, or rather when we try to, the mouse doesn't appear. This happens in a couple of Unity versions and I'm not quite sure which ones. So just to be sure and get around it all, we're going to add two lines of code into our quest 001 take. And all these two lines of code are going to do is activate the screen cursor for us. So if you open up the script and go to where we have if input, don't get button down, action. Underneath the next if statement, check the distance, we just need to put screen dot lock cursor equals false, semicolon, and then cursor dot visible equals true, semicolon, and save. So just to test that out now, if we go to Unity and press play, if we head over to our notice board, press E, you can see the mouse appears straight away. And then as soon as we cl either click accept or decline, the mouse will automatically disappear. So that's that bit sorted. So you can see that the first part of uh, our quest is reach the clearing in the wood. So that's what we're gonna aim for at the moment. So let's create a clearing in this little wood here. So I'm gonna double click on this heart here to zoom myself down and bring myself over this way. And I'm going to expand this wood uh, just a little and then create a clearing. So let's go on the terrain. Let's add some trees around here. Let's decrease the brush size a bit. Let's make some alterations. So I'm not going to go into how to use terrain. You guys know how to use terrains now. So we've added some trees in and let's make a clearing. So let's hold... Um, shift and make a clearing there. In fact, I think I want the clearing about there. And now I'm just going to do a quick paint tool and do this as a path. And I'll do a path connecting that clearing to our main path here. So we'll just do that. And then finally, let's clear the trees out that way. So we can actually see the path. Okay, that should do, I think. Yeah, that's good enough. So now we have a clearing in the wood. And what we want to do here is create a trigger to say that we've reached this clearing. That's where we're going to have a cube, which is set as the trigger. So game object, 3D object, cube. Uh, let's right click, rename, and call it, let's call it Q001 underscore O1, which is short for objective, underscore one because this is the first thing we're going to do so it's kind of like trying to get a naming convention just right and let's bring it into position where we would want the trigger to be and we need to expand it to fit the actual path itself so let's increase the size there to about 20 and that looks about right there so because it's the trigger we need to set is trigger now, obviously, you guys can take as much time as you need. If you need to get it more precise, then that is completely fine. So that's my trigger. I'm going to leave the mesh renderer on for now, just so we can see ourselves crossing this particular trigger. So we're going to need to create a script for this. So in our quests folder, let's right click, create, and let's create another folder and just call it quest 001. And within this one, let's right click, create C sharp script and let's call this um, objective zero one underscore. In fact, let's call it, so we need to get the name and conventions just right. So I think Q zero zero one objective zero one. We should do that. So, cause you can't have two scripts with the same name. That would be a little bit silly. So at least this way we have a bit of variation in the script name. So we're going to be using some UI elements. So we have to put at the top using unity engine dot UI semicolon. 
We don't need the start section and we don't need this little note here. So the way this script is going to work is when we go into this trigger, we need to set active our little um, objective at the top, which is here on the canvas. This is this one here. So active quest object zero one. We need to set that active and then make it disappear. Now the way I'm going to make it disappear is I want it to kind of shrink into nothing. That's just what I'm going to do with this one. If you want to make the animation, make it go off screen, fade out, you can do that. I'm just going to make it shrink because I just think that's kind of cool. So public game object, and let's call this the objective. And that's the UI element that we've just spoke about. And the next one is going to be an integer. So public int, and we're going to call this close objective so this is going to tell us to close it to um, I should say finish off this particular objective so I'm going to leave void update empty for now we're going to start with void on trigger enter open close bracket open curly bracket and within this on trigger enter the only thing we want to happen is to start uh, start a coroutine now this coroutine is going to be something that contains a wait for second statement. So it can't be in this on trigger enter because we need to do it as an I enumerator. So what we'll do is we'll do start coroutine and in brackets, what we're going to call it is finish objective. And we need open close bracket and then close bracket there, semicolon and close curly bracket so now we have to actually create that finish objective so we do i enumerator finish oops objective open close bracket open curly bracket so within this what we're going to do is because the ui for objective one is currently set as inactive we just need to do the objective dot set active true and if you remember we put half a second of animation for it to fade on screen we need to wait for that half a second before we can do anything else with it so we need to do yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets 0 0.5 f i remember the f is because it's a float close bracket semicolon next thing we need to do is we need to make this variable equals to one because by default it's set to zero. So close objective equals one, semicolon, and then close curly bracket to finish off that I enumerator. Now, if we've done this right, or if you've done this right, this finish objective now should turn from red to black, if at least if you're using mono develop like I am. So this is all good and well having the trigger working and then turning on the actual objective. But what we need to do is make it shrink and disappear and go off permanently to say that we've done this objective. So in void update, we need to do if close objective is equal, and that's double equal to one, open curly bracket and do the following. So if it is one, like it is down here, then we need to check if our local scale of the actual objective UI element is greater than zero or less than or equal to zero, I should say. So if the objective dot transform dot local scale, remember it's case sensitive here. So the L is lowercase, the S is uppercase dot Y is less than or equal to 0, 0.0 f then do the following so we want to set close objective equal to zero the reason we do that is because this objective is now complete and it means that the objective on screen is equal to zero so it's disappeared so we can then set it as inactive so the objective dot set active false and then close curly bracket so that's that part of the if statement but we have to do the flip side of it 
so we need an else statement. Now the reason we've got an else statement is because we want to shrink our, um, our UI element by about 0 0.01 per frame, just to make it kind of shrink on the screen. You'll, you'll see what happens as we play and, and go through it. So we need the objective dot transform dot, oops, it's auto filled there, local scale dot y minus equals new vector three. So we have to set some figures now within this vector three. So we don't want to shrink on the x at all. So we have 0, 0.0 f there. We do want to shrink on the y. So we need 0, 0.01 f there. And we don't want to shrink on the z at all. So 0, 0.0 f close bracket semicolon. And then we close that else statement, then we close our if statement, and then down here, this one closes our update. So if we've done this right, hopefully when we save, go back to Unity. Okay, so it's saying an error. Let's have a look where we have an error. So it doesn't like this here. So it's saying the objective dot transform dot local scale. Okay, so let's just check we have got this right. What's this error here as well? So it's the same line. So it's saying that the objective dot transform dot local scale minus new. Okay, so it, basically it's just this here. We've tried to change the Y when we're already changing it just here anyway. So we can get rid of that dot Y and save and then head back to Unity. And our errors, yep, that's fine. So it's only a warning. So the idea of what's happening here is we're gonna enter the trigger. We're gonna start the objective because we've entered it. And we're going to set close objective to one, which then decreases the size of the UI element by 0 0.01 every frame until it reaches zero, at which point it turns it off. So we just need to attach this particular script to our trigger down here and then set the objective, which was active quest object zero one to there. And now let's press play. So what's gonna happen here is we'll take the quest. Let's accept. Let's head over here. Let's hold down shift and, uh, whoops. <laughs> hold down shift and run, speed things along. So what should happen now is our objective should appear and then it should kind of fade. So there we go. You can see that fading off screen. Now that's just the method I've used to kind of clear that objective. You could do anything you want. Like I say, you could slide it off screen. You could change the color. You could fade it out or whatever you want. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of the mesh renderer on that object now. Okay, so we've reached the clearing in the wood. And the next thing it tells us to do is... What does it tell us to do? Let's have a look at our quest zero, zero, 001. So the next one is open the chest. So we need a chest within this clearing. So let's put one just here. Now, if we go to our assets, go to objects, and then you can bring in this treasure chest, which you can get from my website. If you head over to there, the link is in the description of this video. Head to downloads and assets, and you can get this treasure chest for free. So what we're gonna do, is I'm going to bring in this treasure chest now. So we'll ha use this one, the chest prefab. This is something that's already set up. If you want to go a little bit further and play around with it, you can use this one that looks like a chest. But probably when you open it, it'll look like this, some sort of kind of like a bar, as it were. But when you drag it into Unity, it'll look more like a chest. So this prefab is already set up, so we don't need to worry too much about anything. Now, the reason... We're using this one, as I say, it's set up because if we click the arrow here and click on top swing, you can see that when we change the, um, sorry, the X rotation, you can see the treasure chest will open and close. Now we want to create an animation for this. So let's go to animations, right click, create folder, and let's call this one um, quest anims. And 
We already created that one, didn't we? So we can go into Quest Animes itself, I should say, rather than create a new one. And on the top swing object itself, let's go to Animation. Let's create and let's have Q01 um, chest open. And the way we're going to do this is over the course of, let's say, two seconds, the chest opens up. So we do that by setting our first frame, as it were, set the rotation to one and then set it back to zero. The reason we do that is because we want to put this initial uh, kind of dot here, which represents that we have set this first frame to make sure it's always zero. And we're doing 60 frames a second. So by frame 120, we want our treasure chest to be open, let's say, that much. That's exactly how we want it. So then press the record button again to stop that animation. And just to check this actually works, let's press play and then quickly head over to the treasure chest to see the animation working. So there you go, you can see that working just fine. So if you can imagine at this point we're opening a treasure chest and that's what it's doing. So I think we'll leave that tutorial there for now. The idea, the idea of what we're going to do in the next tutorial is to add a sword into that treasure chest that we can pick up. And we'll also re kind of quickly repeat what we've done in this one to cancel off each objective. Um, we'll also set a blocker so we can't actually start this quest unless we've picked it up from that quest board first of all, i.e. we don't want to get to this bit here and then somehow magically the quest starts spawning things. So I'll leave this with you guys now. Play around with your tre uh, treasure chest. You have a go at different things, try out triggers in different places again and see how far you get. As I say, the next tutorial will be finishing up this quest anyway. So guys, until that next episode, Thank you very much for watching.